so um, now we are going to uh, have our first uh, um, uh, part, and so um, we uh, would like to invite, you see, um, uh, uh, His Holiness uh, uh, Representative uh, to North America and Mr. Ozu and, and Serena and to give us you see, a speech. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you, Professor Xiaoming and uh, Professor Yang Jianqi and uh, uh, other members of the guest and Honorable Kowloon Security uh, Central Tibetan Administration and the distinguished guests here. Uh, the first of all, I really want to acknowledge uh, my deep gratitude uh, to Professor Xiaoming and uh, quite a number of you uh, different organizations who have put together this symposium uh, to mark the 60th anniversary of uh, Tibetans and His Holiness Dalai Lama in exile. And uh, then secondly, I also wanted to really uh, welcome our Honorable Kalun uh, from Dharamsala. As uh, Professor Shaming explained, he came all the way uh, from Dharamsala uh, and uh, because of uh, indoor park air problem, you know, now the journey from and to Dharamsala or India takes more than six hours than usual uh, because they have to take a different route. <coughs> so, but uh, we're really cr uh, grateful that he has been able to make it despite the fact that uh, the, the parliament session of the budget uh, for the year 2019-20 is ongoing in Dharamsala. So it also explains how the Central Tibetan Administration considers, views uh, the, the relationship between the Chinese brothers and sisters and the Tibetan uh, people, uh, how important they consider it. So uh, when we requested uh, Si Chong uh, about uh, this symposium and to uh, come over, uh, although it is not possible for him to come over, but he said that it's such an important occasion and such an effort uh, from our Chinese brothers and sisters, and also for that matter, the Lagoif uh, Foundation Museum for sponsoring this, that he immediately sent our uh, security minister. So by the way, security minister is also a China expert, besides his, uh, uh, you know, regular position. So he actually left Tibet. Uh, much later, so quite uh, fluent in uh, Mandarin, uh, and so I think it will be a very good conversation today. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. And now, uh, as uh, Professor Shaming uh, um, laid out, that uh, uh, today's symposium is going to have probably two uh, sort of uh, agenda. One is to facilitate, one is to talk about uh, past achievements, accomplishments, being in exile uh, under the leadership of His Holiness Dalai Lama. And uh, secondly, how we can support to further this cause, because this is still an unresolved issue. So uh, His Holiness always uh, says this, and I always uh, you know, believe in it. Uh, he says that as far as accomplishment and achievements are concerned, Tibetans should not talk too much. Let other people talk about it. And then uh, you go and try to find out what are your shortcomings and where weaknesses, and then how you can solve those weaknesses. So this is his uh, golden advice all the time, and we try to always keep this. So uh, uh, I would s s let uh, our Chinese brothers and sisters talk more about what we have done, how we have achieved. Uh, the many of you have been, you know, uh, China or the Tibet expert now or for a number of years collaboration and uh, we had uh, uh, such a meeting and uh, personally for me it was always an honor to meet all of you uh, and many more others in the last year and uh, two, three months that I've been in this position. And more and more you meet, uh, you, or you, I meet you more and more, I uh, kind of developed a respect uh, for all of your you know, thoughts and actions. And then particularly this one to mark the 60th anniversary of Tibetans in Exile, uh, convening such a symposium, organizing such a symposium uh, from the Chinese uh, brothers and sisters, 
uh, will send a very strong message again to people in Tibet, inside the Tibet, will, as a support. So Tibetan story, uh, as uh, Professor Shami and many of you know, it's a story of, uh, uh, you know, suffering and tragedy, but at the same time as a uh, suffering of accomplishment and achievements, even, uh, uh, you know, a great uh, uh, Western scholar has also mentioned that uh, the way His Holiness was able to come out into exile and the way the Tibetans have been able to preserve their identity, culture, language and everything in exile under such a difficult situation is sort of a miracle of the 21st century. So uh, this is how in Privley he explains uh, how we, we have been doing. But at the same time, you know, during this last 60 years, we lost so many of our brothers and sisters in Tibet. Uh, during the Cultural Revolution, it was 1.2 million people died. And then recent times, 153 people have already burned themselves in protest of, uh, uh, you know, freedom and uh, inspiring His Holiness to return to Tibet. So uh, it's an ongoing struggle. Uh, uh, really, uh, uh, because you know, it's a really uh, something very historic in the sense that uh, the uh, operas always is looking for with this very static sort of uh, goal. Now the second part is goal. So goal is for Tibetans is almost set at the moment. That's a middle way approach to work with the Chinese government, and this His Holiness has envisioned long time back, and we are still. This has been endorsed by the Tibetan parliament in exile and it's still the policy of Tibetan administration to live together for the mutual interests of uh, both the people of uh, Ch China and uh, uh, Tibet. But uh, unfortunately, there has been very poor response. And uh, sometime in 1980s, there were some dialogues, uh, but uh, however, in, since 2008, I think it has also, the dialogue has stopped and uh, uh, not much is happening. And then what you, uh, you know, find out uh, from this kind of uh, historic sort of relationship between the two is uh, the Chinese government, the communist Chinese government, uh, always uses repression and suppression as a means to control people inside Tibet. And then through the forced propaganda, outside Tibet. So even to yesterday, if you had, some of you had opportunity to see that, they wrote out a white paper on Tibet. So that they mentioned about how last 60 years they have democratized Tibet. That's something very, you know, very strange and laughable. And when I read that in the morning, I felt there is a Tibetan uh, proverb which says that uh, if the liar, the big liar, keeps on lying, the honest person cannot do anything but even, you know, prompts to cry. So uh, they, if you go through that, they said that how, how much democratization they brought in Tibet and then what kind of uh, religious freedom is enjoyed by the Tibetan people. So everybody knows it right now. You know, Uyghurs, Muslims, they are having problems. Even the Chinese Christians, they're having problems in, in terms of religious belief. Tibetan um, Buddhists, they're having uh, religious persecution for so many years. But still, in the <laughs> letter, and then they quote their constitution. Well, in the constitution, it may be there, but the thing is how it is practiced. So that what is what actually matters. And the uh, whole picture is actually very, very uh, sad. And then the way kept on talking about it is uh, even making it even more laughable. So uh, now as we talk about the middle way approach, my only request, and I've been requesting this all the time we met with the Chinese brothers and sisters, is to make, uh, I think Professor Xiaoming mentioned a little bit on this, to make uh, the stand and the policy of middle way approach known widely and more by the Chinese people inside China. Because this is where we are, we're trying very hard, but that's where we need more help. Uh, and then also, you know, because uh, sometimes you feel how much the Chinese leadership at the apex, they know the reality about what the middle way approach is. It may, you know, look a little strange, but 
because uh, what I was trying to f find out is in uh, when we sent the first delegation to Tibet uh, way back in 1978-9 and at uh, that time like, uh, the Deng Xiaoping was kind of more practical he said oh, let's you know sift truth from fact and uh, based on that we sent the first delegation and even during that time what we learned was they were of this impression the leadership that, that maybe the Tibetan people is really enjoying freedom and much prosperity so they even told some of the Tibetan communities that when the delegation comes to not protest, not do nothing of that kind of that sort of thing. To request uh, this, uh, the participants here in this small thing that we need to actually uh, reach out to more of people in China and explain what the middle way approach is all about. With this word, again, uh, thank you, Professor Shaming, for all your. Uh, you know, initiative in getting all of us together. And uh, thank you, Goma, for coming all day from Dharamsala. And thank you, all of you, for being a part of this symposium. And my, me, you know, I really want to look forward. I'm looking forward to the, you know, the talks, the intellectual talks, the, the ex you know, the conversations from our, uh, you know, special uh, distinguished guest today. Thank you so much. Oops. Thank有全部理事翻译 我们这个主题一个当然是要一个看到我们的成就，但是当然了嘛，总是教育我们。那么我们呢，应该多看到自己的缺点和弱点。那么所以呢，不要那个嗯老谈我们的成就。所以如果要谈成就的话呢，那么
。但是呢，在那个呃中国政府或者在西藏本身，就有一些左倾的力量了，极左力量了，因为他们的个人利益了。他们呢是要隐瞒，那么是没有呃讲真相，呃，所以呢，我们呃也呃认为呢，可能中央政府呢很多呢也都没有看到真相，所以我们希望汉人呢，那么有共同的努力呢来帮助我们呢，能够就是呃让呃一个更多的一个、呃、中国人呢，呃或者是中央政府能够了解那个就是呃真相，但是呃很可惜了，现在中国政府还在继续的在掩盖的真相，一个最近的例子就是呃施政呢。在那个多伦多大学访问的时候，那么、呃、遇到中国学生的那个各种那个抗议，那么他们呢发出这些传单，这些传单呢就把过去的历史，尤其是比如死刑的这些东西呢，那么弄来了，就是说诋毁，就是说呃藏人或者是那个当今的这个就是西藏流亡政府，那么这些呢，比如说死刑是全世界各地呢当时都有的，那么都是呃六七十年或者是呃那个几十年前的事情，但是他们呢就是要呃把这些东西继续用来了，呃诋毁就是今天的。也就是藏人那个流亡藏人和流亡政府啊，所以我我们希望呢，就是我们呢能够呃走出去了，不断的就是呃跟汉人接触了，把我们这些呃那个事实啊能够传播出去，呃，所以谢谢大家。<笑>